Summer, summer, summer time. It's the summer time. Hey everyone, it is summer time. The sun is shining, the flowers are blooming, and all the fruits are blossoming. And that means it is officially strawberry tart time. This tart is inspired by one of my most dearest, dearest mother figures in my life. She's from my community and her name is Guru Charana Padma, which means lotus. Padma means lotus. And so, in honor of her, whom this recipe originated from, I'm going to call this the strawberry lotus tart. So this recipe has three parts. We have the crusty pastry. It's actually a very thin pastry at the bottom, very delicate. This is a British recipe, and so everything is very, um, British. You know how British people are always like, very, it feels very delicate and like elegant. That's literally what this pastry feels like. That is what this tart feels like. And then we have a cream cheese filling. So there's actually a really lovely balance of sweet and salty and sour flavors in this. The cream cheese is only slightly sweetened. And then on top, we have almost jelly-like strawberry topping and then fresh strawberries on top too. So without further ado, so without further ado, <laughs> further ado sounds so weird. Without further adieu. Adieu. Yeah. Is it adieu? Adieu. Or adieu? A-D-O. Oh, adieu. Further adieu. That makes no sense. English is weird. Let's make the pastry. It's only four ingredients. We have our flour, our butter, our salt, and our sweetener. Now, the only bit of this I wanted to highlight was the fact that the butter is cubed up like this. I've cubed it up and actually kept it in the fridge until the moment I'm about to use it. Cold butter is essential in making the pastry flaky, just the best texture that um, you want in this pastry. And for the butter, I have used none other than Miyoko's. I just can't get, can't stop eating it. I buy probably Probably three of these packs a week probably shouldn't be eating that much butter but I do so grab yourself a bowl and then you are going to throw in your flour add the butter in and then we're gonna cream it so you're gonna rub the butter into the flour until it's almost disappeared until it just looks like really really tiny breadcrumbs if you're using unsalted butter this is where you would add in your salt but my butter is salted and so I'm not gonna add any more of that in and then we're gonna add in the milk and bring it all together don't need it too much just use your hands to bring the dough together into a ball. Next up, you're just going to wrap your dough in saran wrap or cling film and put it into the fridge while we prepare the filling. For the cream cheese filling, again, it's simple. A bit of cream cheese, some vanilla extract and some lemon and some sweetener which comes in the form of maple syrup so for the cream cheese i'm going to be using kite hills cream cheese when it comes to non-dairy products especially with cheeses i love kite hill so let's leave this aside while we roll out our pastry now you have two options I have many times made this in little tarts like this when i've had people coming over i really like giving people their own separate tart to enjoy but um, I wanted to try it in a larger tin. This is how it's traditionally made. Then you get just a chunkier piece and I just wanted to try it. Okay, so remember I said that this pastry is very thin and delicate. So we're gonna roll it out pretty thin. As you can tell, I'm not an expert baker. I'm, not, I'm getting used to doing pastries. And so my pastry is a little bit rough around the edges. A little bit like me. The best way of doing it, I just got told by my amazing videographer that she has come up with an amazing trick. And she said that the best way of making sure that the edges are as round as possible and that they don't kind of look like this. Um, you can actually, in the saran wrap, roll it around as much as possible to make it as smooth as possible. And then you can even do a couple of rolls when it's inside of the saran wrap. And that will hopefully avoid having these type of edges. This is also another reason why I do um, smaller pastries because um, there's less chance of um, things breaking. Oh, okay, not too bad, not too bad. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's all happening now. Oh, too much over one side. Hold on. Voila. As simple as that. The more rustic you make it, the more everyone will know that you made it from scratch by your own hands. 
And that, my friend, is something to celebrate. Now, if, like me, you're not a pastry expert, there may be a possibility that the way that we handle this pastry may cause it to shrink in the oven. And so to avoid that, one trick I have found is to leave a little bit over the edge. So it kind of weighs it down and um, then you can always cut them off around the side. I'm going to take off the bits which are extremely large. But, um, and also, if you end up um, realizing that you've made it long on one side and short on the other, you can always kind of just do a bit of DIY, stick a bit from here, there. <laughs> Now I think we did a decent job given that this is the first time I'm actually trying this in a bigger tart case. Now all you're going to do is pierce it with a knife and we're going to place it back into the fridge. Um, you can put it into the freezer as well if you want to, just to cool down completely before we put it into the oven to bake. If you have any pastry left over like I do, I'm actually just going to make up a little mini one on the side. All for me. And last but not least, we need to make the topping. So for that, we need our strawberries. We're actually going to make a puree with the strawberries and water and some lemon. <gasps> the colour. That is so beautiful. And then we're going to add it into a pan with sugar and agar agar and let it thicken up. Now you can get powder of agar agar and you can get flakes. I prefer the powder just because um, I find it stronger. So you're going to take some of that, mix it up with water in a little bowl, like a tablespoon of water, before we add it into the strawberry mixture. Oh, and for those of you who weren't aware of what agar agar is, um, it's actually a gelatin substitute. So it's re it really works exactly the same as gelatin does. So we're used to seeing things thicken and then we know it's done. But actually with agar agar, you'll just let it boil for a couple of minutes and then it only starts thickening when it cools down. So this has been bubbling, bubbling enough. We're gonna take it off the stove and leave it aside it should thicken up once we've poured it on to the tart so our tart is out of the oven and to be honest i'm pretty impressed it didn't shrink and although it looks a little rough around the edges i am uh, very happy with it i'm very happy with it so we're going to assemble now so we're going to dollop on our cream cheese onto the base add on your strawberries place them in whichever way you like i've chopped mine up into half pieces and then we're gonna pour on that jelly-like substance that's sitting over there. So, as you can see, I have a bit of the edges left on and you have a choice. You can either chop them off or you can keep them on. It's totally up to you. If you wanna chop them off, grab yourself a serrated knife and just slowly chip away at the side. Just make sure you don't take away the inside of the pie with it. Last step, put it in the fridge. So I'm sure you weren't sure whether this was going to turn out by the way I was rolling the pastry. And to be honest, I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out. But guess what? We did it! So we're going to pop this out. Perfect. Take away all the... Hey. <laughs> the question is, do we use a serrated knife or a not serrated knife and I'm gonna go for serrated. My, my intuition is telling me to do that. So we're gonna cut a slice. Okay, let's do it. Okay, it is time to taste, but we all know that we can't eat it without saying our prayer of gratitude. So let's take a moment to um, thank all the farmers that have been growing these wonderful strawberries for us to have been able to make this tart. Um, the grains um, and the plants and the earth for um, providing us with everything the grains and these uh, fruits have needed to grow and all the way back to God for giving us all of this um, and available for us to eat and enjoy. Oh, I was also going to tell you that the reason I have such a, a deep love for strawberries is because growing up, um, one, we would go strawberry picking at the beginning of summer. And um, it was something that we used to do with my family. We'd all go together. And it reminds me a little bit of my birthday because it was always around summertime. My birthday's in summer, FYI. Also, it's such a British thing, like British... English strawberries are like no other strawberries I've ever tasted. They are so sweet. And yeah, I think the, the start of summer for me is when it is officially strawberry season. That's when summer feels real. So this reminds me of home right now and I'm excited to dig in. Oh, that was a good cut of the pastry. Oh, it... mm. Yeah, you know, 
What's amazing about this is that I actually don't love desserts that are way too sweet. And this is great because the middle has a savory texture, savory feel. The top has the sweetness from the strawberries and it just all comes together. Summer in your mouth. I'm gonna listen to these beautiful birds and enjoy this. Sending you so much love and gratitude for the rest of your week. If you like this video, or even if you didn't like it at all, leave a comment and subscribe anyway, so I can get to know you, just as you're getting to know me and my wonderful skill of juggling through this video. See you next time.